The second step of translation is called elongation because our peptide is going to start getting longer. After the initiator transfer RNA attaches to the P site, the second transfer RNA, which is carrying another amino acid, settles into the A site on the ribosome. If the second codon is GCU, for example, the second transfer RNA will have an anticodon of CGA. This particular transfer RNA would be carrying the amino acid alanine. An enzyme in the large subunit of the ribosome transfers the methionine from the initiator transfer RNA to the alanine bound to the second transfer RNA. A peptide bond forms between these two amino acids forming a dipeptide. Once this happens, the ribosome slides on to the next codon on the messenger RNA. This action shifts the initiator transfer RNA to the E site and the second transfer RNA to the P site. Having given its amino acid to the dipeptide, the initiator transfer RNA will exit the ribosome and seek out another methionine in the cytosol. The next transfer RNA will settle into the A site. Once again, the enzyme transfers the amino acid at the P site to the transfer RNA at the A site. However, this time, both amino acids of the dipeptide transfer over, making the peptide an even longer chain of amino acids. This process continues until the ribosome reaches the stop codon, at which point a protein called release factor binds to the A site rather than transfer RNA. The new protein releases from the ribosome and the ribosome disassembles. This last step is called termination, and our new protein is now ready for packaging and export.